All right, this is Frank Taylor with Nature at Your Door. I'm here at Honeymoon Beach State Park in Florida with another on the road episode of Nature at Your Door. Today's episode is about a fascinating tree which has absolutely captivated me since I've been here. It is a remarkable, remarkable tree and it's no wonder it's the state tree of both Florida and South Carolina. And the Seminole Indians called it the tree of life. So this episode is gonna be all about the sable palm, also known as a cabbage palm and many other names, and everything you need to know about this remarkable and amazing tree. Right here in your backyard, you never know what you're gonna find. The cabbage palm or the sable palmetto or the sable palm comes by many names. It's probably one of the very few species whose scientific name is the same as one of its most common names. And its scientific name is sable palmetto. It's known as a fan palm because of its fan-like leaves. The broad range of environments this tree can live in, it to me is just absolutely fascinating. It can survive in high winds and salt spray. It can survive droughts. It can tolerate standing water in near swamps, and it can tolerate inundation by salt water and salt water intrusion. It's particularly resistant to hurricanes and wind and storms, and it's often the last tree standing when a powerful hurricane moves through. It can grow in the poorest of soils. It can form forests of sable palms like this one. And the ground here seems seemingly like a desert and hardly any organic material. And here is this cabbage palm thriving and giving life to other plants and animals by changing the environmental characteristics and providing shade and cooling and anchor the soil. The wildlife value of the sable palm is superb. The hiding places it provides for birds, lizards, and snakes, and mammals. It provides refuge, again, from wind and storms, but also from heat. You can visibly feel the temperature cool down when you walk into a, a compact stand of these sable palms. When the tree flowers in the spring, it produces abundant flowers, which provide nectar for so many organisms. And in turn, it drops numerous, numerous seeds. And these seeds provide food for local mammals, birds, and migratory birds as well. It's been estimated that this provides maybe 30 to 40% of a raccoon's diet. And you can see they're pretty much everywhere here on the ground. These seeds can also be collected, roasted, and with various techniques, you can grind it and make a flour out of it as the indigenous peoples took advantage of this abundant resource. With his boot jacks and his tangles of fronds, you can see that there's just so many places for organisms to hide, both from predators, to make nests, to be protected from extremes of sun and wind. There are also many epiphytic plant species and air plants and ferns that will grow on these, including the strangler fig, which may ultimately lead to, to the demise of the sable palm. You'll have to check out my episode on strangler figs. It's little wonder to me that this amazing, unique tree is the state tree of both South Carolina and Florida. It provides life and refuge to so many organisms and to the indigenous peoples of western Florida and these maritime islands, including the Seminole tribe, used all parts of this tree for food, medicine, and shelter. The fronds were used to thatch their chickies or their homes. The trunks were used for central support. Fibrous hairs were made into twine. The fronds were used for basket weaving. Seeds, of course, were grown into flour. And the inner stem of the tree could actually be eaten. 
and it's known as heart of palm. The unfortunate part of that is if you harvest a tree to collect the heart of palm from it, you have to essentially cut the top of the tree off, strip layers, and then once you get inside, you'll find a very crispy, tender, delicious, almost cabbage-like tasting plant. So this tree really was the tree of life. Cabbage palm can easily be confused with saw palmetto. And if you, if you look closely at the leaves, this is one of the easy ways to tell them apart. The saw palmetto generally grows along the ground and actually has a trunk that lays on the ground. But if you look at the leaves, you can see that on the uh, cabbage palmetto, the fronds uh, attachment points come to a very distinct point. But on the saw palmetto, you can see that the fronds come off at essentially a rectangular ending of the stem of the frond. In my visit to Florida, I learned so many fascinating native species that are adapted to this drought and fire dependent environment. You can see that the cabbage palms are very fire resistant and fire is a natural part of this environment that cabbage palms uh, have grown up in and adapted in millions of years. In fact, this corridor between Tampa or, and Orlando is called the lightning capital of the world. There are more lightning strikes here anywhere else in the North America. And so these forests are all adapted to a cycle of fire. In fact, many of the plants are dependent upon it and in animals as well. Even with their fire resistance, cabbage palms or sable palmetto are notoriously slow growers. And they're actually more closely related to grasses than trees. And their trunks, if you cut them and look at them in cross section, you don't see the rings like you do in hardwood or softwood trees. And new trees that are just beginning to grow. And the trunk really doesn't change in diameter over the lifetime of the tree. So a tree will only grow about six inches in height per year, which is barely noticeable. And their trunk really doesn't change in diameter as it gets older. The width of the trunk is going to be about the same whether it's five or ten years old or 50 years old and 30 or 40 feet tall. The other thing you may have noticed about them is that some of the cabbage palms or palmettos have bark on them, or the boot jacks, I should say, and others don't, and the bark appears smooth. So what is that all about? Well, it's a curious thing, and scientists don't really know what triggers it, but at some point, a tree will trigger the release of all those boot jacks or old palm fronds that are connected there. Sometimes in, in residential areas, people have arborists do that for them. But you can see here out in the wild on the island here in the forest, there are some trees that are smooth and there are some trees that retain their boot jack. And exactly what makes them trigger the boot jacks is not at all clear to science. Well, thanks for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door. And remember, if you like what I do, please subscribe, give me a like, and leave me a comment. I love hearing from my viewers. And remember, I cover all things nature, from frogs, toads, snakes, turtles, the myriapoda, insects, trees, wildflowers, and fungi. I cover all the things you might encounter just outside your door. Thanks again for watching this episode of Nature at Your Door.